All right, welcome back to the DU Sports Podcast. I'm Caleb, joined by youth soccer referee and buddy nature photographer Josh Ellis. We're coming to you in the final week of BYU basketball's regular season and fresh off the adrenaline of USA women's hockey winning the gold medal, feeling golden. Are you sad the Olympics are coming to an end, Josh? Oh my gosh, that game last night was fantastic. Um, I might have bombed my midterm today because I stayed <laughs> up till 1 o'clock watching the game, but totally oh, worth it. So. Um, love the winter games. I uh, hope they come back to Salt Lake. But... Ooh, that would, that would be quite the treat, wouldn't it? That'd be yeah. a party. Well, anyway, we've still got snow here in Utah and plenty of sports to talk about. Men's basketball lost to San Diego on the road following two consecutive overtime games. They're looking to finish off the, the regular season right against Portland and Gonzaga before heading to the WCC tournament in Vegas next week. The women's team also lost to San Diego and fell to third in the WCC. Both the men and women now sit in third place with 10-6 and six conference records. Baseball got off to a hot, hot start last week, going 3-1 and one against Cal State Northridge with 30 total runs scored over the weekend. They're on the road uh, playing Hawaii this weekend, so hopefully bring back some of that nice weather. <laughs> Uh, softball recovered after a rough first week to go 3-2 and two at the Marucci Desert Classic in Las Vegas. They're in California this weekend, taking on two ranked teams with Tennessee and Oklahoma. Number six men's volleyball have won six in a row and returned home to take on Stanford Saturday at 8 o'clock. Price Jarman won MPSF Defense Player of the Week after consecutive sweeps on the road last weekend. Number 18, Gymnastics, got its highest score since 2005 last weekend at home, totaling 196.625 points. They take on Boise State at home this Friday at 7. So, as I mentioned, we got Gonzaga coming to town this Saturday. Big game for BYU, as they have yet to win this season against the quote-unquote St. Zaga teams, as we call them, the top two in the conference. A win would give fans hope for a deep conference tournament run, while a loss will mean an almost certain NIT-bound team for the third straight year. This team feels kind of tired following three games on the road and so much dependence on Gilly Childs and Elijah Bryant. So in your mind, Josh, who needs to step up this weekend? Who will be you know, the X or the Y factor, I guess, for uh, that game that, uh, here at, in Provo against Gonzaga? Yeah, I think it's going to boil down to really just the perimeter in general. Um, TJ Haas had that hot streak to start conference play. It's kind of fizzled out here over the last little bit. Um, and so not to just pin it on him, but you know we've mentioned before that it can't just be a one- or two-person team um, because St. Mary's or Gonzaga have the personnel and the skill to shut down either Bryant or Childs if they're the only ones that are on fire for a game. And so getting Haas back into it would be huge. The biggest thing is I just feel the Cougars need a strong perimeter game. Um, down low, it's going to be a tough battle um, between Childs and Nixon down there. BYU mm. can hold their own, but at the same time, we've seen that when it comes to a low post fight, the Cougars usually don't come out on top with those. So, good perimeter offense, I feel, is the biggest key. Um, you know, and as you mentioned, uh, a loss really kind of seals, you know, the the atmosphere of it's most likely the NIT again for the Cougars. Uh, right now, the current NIT bracketology, which has become a go-to hmm. source for the Cougars, unfortunately, oh, over the last couple of years, uh, currently a six seed uh, slated to face Utah again, which would be quite the rematch. Um, so yeah, that's where things are with the Cougars. Um, would love to see them pull off the upset, obviously, over Gonzaga. Would be a huge boost, and with the way that the conference standings are working out, a win uh, could cost... A BYU win could cost Gonzaga the regular season crown, a, you know, an outright crown there. Um, it would shift up the conference seating a little bit. Biggest thing, Cougars got to take care of Portland tonight, and then, you know, with that win, you could see how everything lines up. I'd prefer to see Gonzaga in that semifinal round mm. uh, than St. Mary's. Uh, BYU's only met the Gales once in the conference tournament. Came last year at a 31 point loss. So, more opportunities against Gonzaga. We've seen that we can pull off the upset there. St. Mary's just the way that we've played against them, yeah. especially out in Moraga. I don't know how the Cougars could really pull it off. It'd, it'd be quite the upset. Yeah. And just for fun, a quick hypo- hypothetical, let's say BYU's down down by five against Gonzaga. You know, you got two minutes to go. We need a stop, but we also need scoring. Do you want Dalton Nixon in there for his defense and hustling, or are you trusting Zach Selyus to knock down a couple three-pointers to win the game for us? Oh, man. Who do, you, uh, who do you want as, a, as that stretch four down there? This is, this is probably where I need to disclose a bias that 
I went to the same high school as Dalton Nixon here in Orem. Uh, so that was where, where I would lean with my gut. And beyond that, my first thought when you bring up Celius, I go back to the St. Mary's game at the end mm. of regulation. Yeah. That shot was just off. And, and not not to pin it all on Zach, you know, if I had been in that huddle, I wouldn't have called his number. Just mm. he hadn't had the greatest game, hadn't done a lot of shooting, just period. I would try to kick it back out to Cannon on the other side, but that's okay. That's in the past. Um I would, I've loved the hustle, the effort from Nixon. Um, it's been there all season. You know, we had that gap there with his foot injury that we kind of lost that for a bit. But I just feel that defensive hustle that he contributes outweighs the potential offense that Celius could bring in and Nixon's limited contributions there. But being able, And also being able to pick up an offensive rebound in right. a final position, I feel would be huge with Nixon. Yeah, totally. Um, I would probably also have to go with Nixon on that. I, I really like, you know, his... His hustle, as you mentioned, uh, his defense, I would just trust him. Um, I mean, even uh, in, in high school, he was known for you know, his three-point shot and stuff. So even if he was called on to, to hit that shot, even though he hasn't, they haven't depended on, on him as a three-point threat, you know, I think he could knock that down if he really needed to. Uh, you, uh, you mentioned uh, you know, the, the, the tournaments, seeding, and, and as far as all that stuff goes. Um, just for a little bit of context, last year, um, BYU ended up going further in the WCC tournament than they did in the NIT in the West Coast Conference beat LMU in the first round and then fell to St. Mary's I believe in the second round go to the NIT lost in the first game to uh, UT Arlington so um, you know it obviously all depends a lot on, on who we uh, match up with in those tournament games but which 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 tournament do you, uh, do you like our odds in more in the WCC or the NIT at this point I would say the WCC, um, just for the fact that this team knows for sure. Like last year, there was a hint of bubble popping right. earlier on, but this year it's pretty clear that an at-large bid has sailed. It's not coming for the Cougars. So you feel like, okay, it's all or nothing. You've got a weekend. Just put three games together, and you can make the dance, which honestly motivates the entire conference. And as we saw, um, a couple of years ago, even you know San Diego pulled off the upset over BYU. Um, so you can't take the first game for granted. That just it can always be a trip up spot. And with you know six conference losses so far, we've seen that pretty much anyone can trip the Cougars up. Mm. They also have the chance to take down anyone. I mean, the overtime loss to St. Mary's gives me hope for that. Right. Um, and we'll see obviously how Saturday goes with Gonzaga. And just historically, the Cougars have had that fighting shot against the Bulldogs no matter what. Um, and so right now, Bulldogs in first, St. Mary's in second. Cougars sitting in third with a one-game lead over Pacific, and then a three-way log jam behind them uh, for fifth, sixth, seventh. Um, and so Cougars, assuming you know, the ideal would well, not the ideal, but most likely, I would feel is they split this weekend. Right. Um, that would keep them in third, and would line up a semifinal matchup with St. Mary's again. Kind of hard to see who the Cougars <laughs> would face up uh, in the yeah, quarterfinal, yeah, just with right. how that first little bit of the bracket is, and it's pretty tight there in the middle. Um, so I feel that the Cougars can go down Saturday, get a strong start, a solid win, just like they did last year. Right? It took down LMU, right. took care of business, and then gear up for you know a St. Zaga matchup and you know leave it all out on the court. And that's it's, it's your last shot to go to the dance. Um you know, no seniors on the team, so no, you know, final hurrahs. But you definitely mm. want to try to cap this season with a higher note. They said at the start of the year, "Hey, our goal is to get to the big dance. Let's see if they can pull it off in three games, and that's all you need." There you go. And well, uh, moving on from basketball for a little bit, the NCAA football attendance records came out uh, last week, and numbers are down by over a thousand uh, across the country, as far as um, fans going to football, college football games. And BYU is no exception to this trend. This is the fourth straight year with a uh, sub sixty thousand uh, average attendance, and it has decreased. It decreased by over two thousand uh, in comparison to last year, twenty sixteen. So as we're getting ready, you know, for spring ball coming up in March, what do you think this BYU football team has to do to kind of spark interest mm -hmm. uh, and and bring back those fans uh, to uh, to fill up Lavelle Edwards Stadium? I mean, the you know almost goes without saying win. Yeah. Would, would help, you know, four wins last year, not not a great year. And, you know, again, spring ball will be exciting, you know, with, you know, almost an entire offensive squad of quarterbacks on the roster. It'll definitely be interesting to see um, how that shakes out with spring ball. 
Um, interested to see how Mangum's ankle and Achilles is doing um, so far. Uh, definitely said that he'd be in there. Um, no contact, obviously, to prevent any re-injuring of that. But I feel to get fans back, um, next year's going to be hard. The home slate is not the most attractive we've <laughs> seen here at Lavelle Edwards. And we knew that that would eventually happen with Independence. It's just the back end of some of these contracts that the Cougars have been signing. Um so it'll definitely be interesting to see if they can, the fans still turn out. You had over 50,000, though, for a game against UMass that really didn't have a whole lot of meaning behind it besides Senior Day. Right. So the Cougar Nation is still showing that it's faithful. It wants to come. wants to support a good team. Uh, they pick up a few early wins, and I definitely feel like we could fill it up, fill up the again. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so you mentioned that game against UMass. Actually, at, at, the, at that game against UMass last year, they they beta tested a Wi-Fi network at the stadium, and apparently it worked really well based on the reactions that I saw on Twitter from fans and stuff like that. We we reached out to uh, BYU Athletics to see kind of what the future of that's going to be. If there are any more developments, they haven't announced anything yet. If that's going to be a permanent addition to the stadium, if there will be Wi-Fi there, so that you know that could, that could definitely bring in some more fans if they know they're going to be able to get internet access. Um, you know, be talking about the game, sending out pictures to friends, whatever it may be, looking up stats. So that could that could definitely be a big draw. And then um, we were talking about earlier, you know, uh, bringing caffeine on campus. You know, you don't have to For go. Sure. You don't have to <laughs> uh, sneak in your your caffeinated Coke or Dr Pepper, or whatever it may be. Now, so that's definitely a more attractive option for those who are coming um, to the games. So um, yeah, we'll definitely look forward to that. Hopefully, you get some exciting uh, developments as far as the offense goes. Maybe get Tanner Mangum back. So it is kind of sad, you know, since Tanner Mangum um, started as BYU quarterback, they have not averaged over 60,000 fans in the stands. So he hasn't really, you know, maybe gotten that full BYU football treatment. The last time we averaged over 60,000 fans was in 2013 um, with, with Taysom Hill and uh, Kyle Van Noy and those guys. So, you know, hopefully we can get some, some excitement behind this team, some some good guys coming in and some guys coming off missions too. So we'll see what happens with spring training coming up. Uh, as you mentioned, maybe the, like, uh, the biggest storyline is the battle at quarterback right now with with Mangum out. And you know, we got Bo Hodge in there. we got Zach Wilson coming in as a freshman. Um, so we'll see how that pans out. But we'll talk more about that as, as spring training gets closer. We did sit down with BYU football wide receiver Micah Simon this week. So here's that. Yeah, Micah Simon from Dallas, Texas. Uh, junior or receiver. <laughs> um, soon to be senior in school. Gotcha. Um, I registered um, Coach Sataki's first year here, so 2016. Uh, yeah, I'm an exercise and wellness major. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's about it. Sweet. Uh, yeah. You're from Dallas, you said, right? Yeah. What, Dallas. what area? So I'm from San Antonio, so oh, like I okay. kind of know the area a little bit. So, uh, Cedar Hill. Okay, sweet. Yeah, so Cedar Hill. I went to Bishop Dunn. No, I, did. I went to private school. Oh, I nice. Go to Cedar Hill. Good stuff, good stuff. And um, what what kind of made you uh, want to come to BYU? What was that decision making process like? I, I know you're already a junior, but if you can look look back a couple of years, what was that like? Yeah, um, I mean it, it's different, you know, not being LDS. Um, didn't know much about BYU, right. but just going through the recruiting process and talking to the coaches at the time, um, I felt like this was the best spot for me, and I haven't had any regrets about coming here, even with all the different coaching changes and things things of that nature. So. I felt like my time here has been has been good, and uh, and uh, yeah, I wouldn't change it. What's what's kind of like your outlook for this this coming season? What are some of your goals, maybe personally and as a team as well? Yeah, I mean, as a team, we're obviously ready to bounce back from uh, from the season we had last year. Um, there's there's a there's a sense of urgency from the players more so um, the last season because we know we don't want to repeat what we did. Uh, and then our coaches are the exact same way, offensively or you know defensively. It's it's the same mindset all around, and we're taking the necessary steps now to to just be ready to ready to go September. Yeah, um, totally. And uh, you've got some, some some new guys coming in uh, as wide receivers. Um, what's kind of um, that that new crowd looking like? What, uh, what, uh, what are you looking forward to most with some of those new guys coming in? Uh, I think it's fun to just get some new guys in in the, in the room with you. Um, got Gunner coming in, right? Gunner Romney. Gunner Romney and Braden Cosper okay. um, are two guys uh, that are for sure coming in. Uh, so other guys going on missions and stuff like that. Right. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to those two. I've been able to get to know those two a little bit, um, do, the, do their recruiting process, and 
like Gunner's brother, Baylor Romney, is here. Gotcha, uh, Quarterback, yeah. so just getting to know their family. And, uh, yeah, just looking forward to it. And, and uh, I know those guys will be ready to come in and be eager to contribute right right away. So that'll be fun. Do you have any family that, like, plays football or anything as well? Or I, I don't sorry, I don't know much about your background, but uh, yeah, uh, brothers or kind yeah, of no, history uh, with you guys? I just have one little brother. He's he's only eight. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big, big guy. A little bit age gap there. Okay, gotcha. But, uh, uh, Nah, but you're yeah. gonna make sure he he get he gets in there, gets some uh, some experience. For right sure, on the field. yeah. <laughs> right on. Uh, but no, nah, yeah. So no, my family wasn't really like huge on football. Okay. I had a cousin that played basketball at Air Force. Oh and, sweet. Like my my like my dad mainly played basketball throughout his uh, his life. Um, but yeah, I really just have a lot of like a lot of my best friends are kind of all over playing. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, sure. Which is I think the one the one game I'm looking forward to is Cal. Because got some buddies the, over there. Yeah, like one of my best friends, like from like sixth grade, he plays. No way. He plays. He plays cornerback there too. <laughs> oh, what? So it'll, it'll be fun for That's me perfect. and him to me and him to go at it, <laughs> and it's yeah, looking forward to it. A little bit of playful, playful trash talk going exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's sweet. And did you play basketball at all growing up? Yeah, yeah. I played basketball too. In high school too, high school. were you like varsity and everything? Or? Yeah, I was actually a three-year uh, no varsity starter. Yeah. What pos- what position were you? I was a guard. Point okay, guard. sweet. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And what what kind of swayed you more the direction of football? Football, uh, like I guess, I guess why did you like choose one of the, one over the other? Yeah, I mean, I felt like I felt like I was a little better. <laughs> yeah, that helps. Football, I think, you know, that, that was <laughs> probably the simple the simple thing, and yeah. like, just being able. I think I just love love football. I mean, I love basketball too. But yeah, you know, you just have a different passion. Mavs fan. Football. Or Mavs. I am a Mavs fan. Mavs fan. We're, you know, we're gonna tank. Yeah, right now. <laughs> uh, gonna it's, tank. it's been quite the week for Mavs fan, hasn't yeah, it, man? man? It's been Mark weird. Cuban, Mark Cuban, all that good stuff. Fined and then all, all that stuff. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Football. Football. Football's been a been a huge passion, a huge love. And good to hear. Wouldn't wouldn't change the sport. Yeah, and you guys, the uh, the quarterbacks especially, got kind of hit by injuries last year a little bit. What's that like, you know, being a wide receiver and going through different quarterback styles, maybe playing styles? What's that like for you on the other end of of the ball? Yeah, you can't let it affect you. You can't you can't go you can't let that kind of affect the way you play. You have to take it upon yourself to, you know, tell yourself, Okay, I need to step up and make yeah. it make it easy for the quarterback. So I think that's something that we tried to do last year mm-hmm. and um, you know, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't work. So that's a mindset that we're carrying to this next season to uh we're gonna. We want to be the best to make it easy for every other position on the field. Gotcha. Good stuff. All right. Well, th- those are all the questions I had for you. Thanks for cool. thanks hey, for chatting with me, Mike. Appreciate, appreciate, it, appreciate it. Yes, sir. We'll uh, we'll look forward to spring training and all that good stuff coming up here soon. Well, thanks for joining us this week on the DU Sports Podcast, everybody. And uh, make sure to join us next week.